Hello, my name is Drew and I'm going to run you through the setup of one of our real-time automation 460 MXE gateways. These are gateways especially designed to move Eaton Power Meter data over to a BACnet IP system like Metasys or one of the other leading uh, BACnet IP clients. This is going to have mapping for the IQ100 level gateways including the 130, 140, 150, the 250, the 260, and then the Power Expert level 4000, 6000, and 8000 gateways. It will move a combination of those power meters over to BACnet IP. So let's get going with the setup. Uh, the first thing you want to do is uh, off the CD that comes with the unit is get a tool called IP Setup. I'm going to tear my desktop. So I'll open that. So this is the box that's going to come up. This is going to find any of our real-time automation devices that are currently um, running on your network. So the gateway is going to come out of the box with an IP address of 192.168.0.100. I've changed this one to be a 192.168.0.101. And my computer is currently on the same subnet. My computer is at a fixed IP of 192.168.0.107. So I'm on the same subnet and I'm able to talk to my unit via crossover cable connected to my uh, PC. So since we're on the same subnet and I can see the device, if I either double click it or just highlight it and click launch web page, uh, we are going to go and get into the actual configuration of the unit. Just one second. Here we go. Oops, did it twice. Okay, so what you'll see here, um, one important thing to note, this is Internet Explorer. Uh, we currently do not have, uh, we are not uh, browser compatible for Firefox. This will be fixed shortly in a later rev, but currently you're able to do all the browsing and diagnostic pages. You're able to do the viewing with Firefox, but if you go to save a configuration, um, unfortunately that is not configurable, so you're unable to save using Firefox. So it is important if you don't want to be very frustrated after doing a lot of configuration and not being able to save, that you do indeed use Internet Explorer. So anyhow, uh, once we're into the unit, we just log into the IP address. Uh, this is the configuration screen you'll see. The first thing you're able to do is give our device a description. So this could be something as simple as Gateway Building 3 Level 1. So in case we have multiple of our gateways around a building or around a campus, we're able to identify them um, here through that description. So we can save that quickly. Uh, the second part here that we can configure is essentially the IP setup. You can do the exact same thing with that IP setup tool I discussed with you earlier. It can also be done here inside of the unit once you've logged in. Uh, I have no interest in changing the IP address of the unit at this time, so we'll just cancel this and just go over that for posterity's sake. Next we'll get to uh, our selected communication modules. In this device we're going to have a Modbus RTU master. That's the protocol, the master protocol that's going to connect out to those power meters. And we're going to have a backnet IP server. That's how we're going to produce this data so that it can be scanned by a BACnet IP client. So if we go in and edit, there are just a few parameters we'll need to set up in order to get this unit moving. Um, here, once we go in to edit our Modbus RTU master, we'll see that's enabled. Keep that uh, enabled. We're then able to see uh, set our response timeout, our delay between poles, um, as well as our connection type. This will essentially d decide for the unit how often we're going to pull all of the power meters. Uh, so this is sometimes application specific, depending on how often you need this data to update. We're able to set those parameters here. Out of the box, we're going to have this default to uh, set up on uh, port 0, which is the T-strip on the unit. And then it's set up for a 485 uh, tw uh, twisted pair, essentially two-wire um, half duplex. Uh, that is the standard for Modbus RTU. So is 90% of the time I would assume going to be how these devices are going to be set up. Here you can also define the baud rate, the date of the parity, and the stop bits. And those are all fine for our application here, so I'm just going to cancel out of that. If we then go down to the backnet IP server, here we're able to define what uh, our device and the data it presents will look like to the backnet IP client. The device instance is a lot like a slave address on the Modbus side. So we're going to be device instance 50. So when the BACnet client goes to pull device instance 50, they'll see us. Here we can enter another name, a description, and location. And this would be the uh, data that would be put out on BACnet IP. So if you scan for device 50, uh, you would see uh, this description, this location. This is data put out um, on the BACnet system. So we'll just leave that blank, but you can certainly be filled in for whatever you'd like to see on your BACnet side. 
Down here you'll see number of objects exposed. Because this is the uh, 460 MXE, these, this is defined in the template file, so we don't have to expose any of the analog or binary inputs or outputs. Uh, we would need to do this if we were adding a generic Modbus device, but because we're just adding an Eaton power meter, this is not necessary. So we'll cancel out of this guy and return to the main page. Uh, because we did make a change, if you go reboot now, and then a quick refresh, the unit will restart. Just takes a moment. Now if we'll go to the uh, server module configuration. The backend IP server, uh, there's nothing else to do there. It's defined that we are uh, device instance 50, and there's really nothing else to do. It's just presenting the data to the backend IP client. Where we need to do our work is in our client module configuration, and that is configuring our Modbus RT master. Um, we're going to have to add the slaves that it's going to pull, and those slaves are, of course, uh, the power meters out on the network that we're looking to uh, grab data from. So from here we can decide um, to add a power meter, whether it's a 250-260, one of the IQ100 level uh, power meters, or one of the power expert meters. You can add any number or any combination of uh, these power meters. You're also able to add generic Modbus RTU slaves in case there are a, a few that may be um, near this device that need to be accessed by BACnet. Um, for the purpose of this video, we're going to skip the generic device. Let's just go ahead and add a power meter. So first off, let's add a power expert power meter. By simply adding that, you'll see that we have added a, um, a slave device for our Modbus master to pull. If we go into edit within that device, we'll first be able to create a device label. So for this one, we said it was a PX4000. Let's call this the 4000 meter. Um, I think we were, we'll just say this is the 13th meter on level 3, but really that could be, that could be anything. The next thing we need to do is give it a slave address. So this is the slave address on the Modbus RTU network. Uh, we'll make this one 12, and this does need to correspond with the device that we're connecting to, so it needs to correspond with the meter. Then when we go to the registers, this is the data from the meter that we are presenting over to BACnet. This is all predefined. These are not all. Uh, this is not all of the data that the meters present to the network. What we've done is we've taken the data that 90% of users are looking for. So these meters present a lot of data, and some of it is just. Uh, I, I mean, it's all great data, but a lot of users don't need it all over on their backnet side. So we've taken what 90% of users need. If there is other data presented by the power meter that a user needs to find, they are able to add additional registers here uh, so that they could grab those points. All Modbus registers and points of data that we map um, are in a spreadsheet in the user manual so be able to see what Modbus data from the power meter goes to where over on the backend IP side. And if you do need to grab additional registers, there is some detailed, uh, some detailed overview of exactly how to do that. But like I said, for 90% of applications, we won't need any additional registers. So for right now, we'll skip that, and we're done adding our first device. Let's just for the sake say we also have an Eaton IQ 250-260. Same, uh, same exact setup. We're going to add that device. We're going to go down, and we're going to edit that. So as we can see right now, it's just the IQ 250-260. This slave address, this slave is number 33. And here again, it has pulled registers um, from that device that 90% um, of the users um, have needed. So again, we've just added our second slave device. And we'll hit Save. Here, um, we are able to add connection to up to 31 devices. What I will say is that if you add all 31 and you're looking for very fast polling uh, poll times, it may be a good idea to get another gateway and limit that. The more devices we have to scan, obviously it adds a little bit to latency. The good thing is though, generally in building automation applications, there are there's not a need for super fast data. Um, these rates aren't something you have to monitor on the millisecond level. It's not generally like process type data. So slower polling is generally acceptable in building automation. And if that is the case, we can certainly support up to 31 devices. So we've configured two slave devices, and that's all we have to do now. If we go back to the main page, do a quick reboot and a refresh. We're essentially done with all the configuration. 